Hello and welcome back to another podcast. My name is Severa Ahmed and I'm a trainee sports journalist at Pulse Social. Today's guest is Yashmin Haroon, who is the chair and founder of Muslim Sports Association. Hello Yashmin, how are you? I'm not bad, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for being on our podcast today. Uh, no, thank you for having me. Um, can you just start off by introducing yourself and also telling us about your organisation? Yeah, so my name is Yashmin Harun. I am the chair and founder of Muslim and Sports Association. Um, Muslim and Sports Association, or MSA, um, is aimed at getting more women and girls from ethnically diverse backgrounds into sports, mainly mainly uh, Muslim women. Um, so we not only get them to participate in sports, but we also ask them to um, volunteer, to coach, and um, to get involved in committees and, and try and get our voices heard um, when there's consultations and things like that, working with national governing bodies and other stakeholders as well. That's a really beneficial organisation. Um, can you le- tell us what led you to start the organisation? Yeah, so I've always been quite sporty. Um, people know I love football um, and I've always had a, a wish to participate in lots of different sports and um, so football was one of them I also did rounders and um, hockey uh, athletics when I left school there was nothing that I felt I could go to in terms of a club that would understand my background or where I could fit into uh, without compromising my cultural or rigid religious beliefs because I would be the only one wearing a hijab or the, the clothing wasn't attire wasn't quite suitable for what I needed to wear and um, so I left school I um, went on to college, then got married, had my children, but I was still missing that sort of that sports element, that team sports element. Um, so I decided to do basketball because I thought other women within the community must be missing that, that side of things as well. Um, so I started basketball um, and it was just a small session. Uh, but at the first few months, we had nobody turn up, just me, coach and one other person. And everyone told me to give up because um, obviously there was a demand for it. But I wanted to persevere and um, I was quite and de- um, so what I did was um, carry on and eventually we were getting 20, 25 ladies coming in to do basketball and then we decided to incorporate MSA um, and we grew the number of sports that we offered from there so we grew into then offering badminton and yoga and pilates and people were coming to us in the local area and saying can you offer this for us can you do this for us and you know that was really good because we started to, to build that trust with the local community yeah i can definitely see um how beneficial that is especially i think sorting out the cultural barriers um that people believe they have so that's a really big thing to overcome as well Um, can you tell us more about your key values and um, what you wish to incorporate more into your organisation? Um, yes, yeah, so our key values is to make it a safe environment for women to come and just enjoy sports. Um, what we want to do is make it a female-only environment. So we have qualified female coaches. We ensure that no men are able to go through and walk into a session um, during our time. So females on our participants are completely safe in terms of they can wear their hijab if they want to, they can take it off if they want to. Um, so making sure that they feel very comfortable and we aim it in such a way that um, the classes are at a time when they are either coming home from work and they're handing the children over to their partners or whether they just need to prepare everything at home and come out. Um, then, you know, everything is at that sort of timing. So it's, it's more tailored I suppose um, than of some of the other sessions where you might have it at ad hoc, ad hoc times we try to tailor it so it meets the needs of the community. Um, this is more so following on the previous question um, what is the aim and uh, mission of your organization? So we want to empower women through sports Um, whether they want to just volunteer, whether they want to participate, whether they want to do their coaching journeys, whether they want to see themselves as an elite sports person as well. Um, We want to support their journeys through that and help them signpost them in terms of where to go, what to do. Um, So we've helped a number of coaches develop through their stages. So stage one, stage two, stage three, 
um, become mentors, work for organisations such as the FA or British Fencing. Um, so we want to help them and support their journeys by removing those barriers, speaking to national governing bodies about their policies, their strategies, trying to engage with us and speak to us directly rather than make assumptions um, and you know, make decisions on our behalf without directly discussing it with us, with the community, with Muslim women. So that's what we want to do is try and start those dialogues with national governing bodies and myself and the trustees have been quite successful in doing so because we sit on a number of boards. Um, so I'm at the FA, um, I'm also on the London FA board and the, Nash, um, the British Fencing as an non-executive director. So having those conversations and removing the, the sort of stereotypes that or assumptions people may have about the Muslim community is really helpful. It means that we get our voices heard um, and strategies and policies can be built around that as well. So we want to see the pathways into sports being a much easier one than what I would have had at my generation. Um, we didn't see sports as a future possibility. Um, we had I had to stop at the age of 16 because I didn't see a future in, in sports, but I could have been an athlete, I could have been a footballer, had someone helped me and supported me and if the options were viable for me. And I don't want that next generation or the generation after that to miss out on those sort of opportunities. Sports should be a, a way of life, a part of life, and there shouldn't be any barriers into, into that. Of course, I 100% agree. I don't believe barriers should stop anyone. Um, can you tell us about the research that you have recently done um, about the barriers for Muslim women in sports? So we identified a high number of ladies or women, um, women and girls that wanted to participate in sports, but they didn't have the right environment to go into. Um, so there's not a lack of women wanting to do sports. It's a lack of safe environments on offer for them. So their local facilities, the local activities that are currently on offer don't suit or meet the cultural needs or religious needs of the community that they serve. Um, there's also a higher standard of women, whereas we're often um, shown as being deprived or a, a deprivation area, social, economically deprived areas, um, vulnerable. That's not the case. They're, they're highly educated, working very professional organ um, companies and you know backgrounds. And I think that stigma of women Muslim women especially, um, being meek, vulnerable women has to change, that stereotype has to change, that narrative has to change. And I think the research demonstrated that there, there, there is a demand for sports and it's not about integration, it's about providing a safe environment. And we have to go into those nuances about what is a safe environment for Muslim women because each culture and um, ethnicity within Muslim communities also have a different need as well so breaking down those barriers as well and understanding the community needs within the Muslim community is, is essential to to get more women in sports of course that is very valuable um, research and data to consider um, what would you say has been your greatest um, success in starting your organization? I think when I first started it, it wasn't something I intended to do. All I wanted to do was get back into sports and basketball was one option. But my, my drive was to get football started because I wanted to get back into football. But when I found that there was no female footballers, especially from an ethnically diverse background, I was really shocked. Um, so what I did, I worked with stakeholders to do a tailored FA level one course. And from there, I, I was going to networking events and, and seeing that I was usually the only brown girl with a hijab in that, in that room. Um, and the decisions were being made on our behalf without directly speaking to us. So although this has all come about, um, it's sort of not as an ambition of mine, but just come about because of a passion of mine, determination to see more Muslim women in sports. Um, that's been sort of my greatest achievement, the mantra of women and impact that we've been able to have on Muslim women. Um, so we've had women that have come in who played football like myself at 13 years old, had to stop then because the parents didn't allow them to integrate or mix with the boys. There was no female oil sessions. 
you know, they've come back to football, they're now coaches, they were their FA mentors, um, they've won awards. We have other women who have come back into badminton and, you know, gone on to play competitions. Um, we've had other women that have learned to ride a bike and now do charity bike rides um, and have that passion as well. So, you know, there's there's so much impact that we have, not just physically, but on their mental well-being as well. Um, and we get the feedback and we just see the difference in how they've grown and how they feel empowered through sports. And I think that's one of my greatest um things that I love to see is just how they've grown through a sport and then they start with one sport they then do two sports they then do three sports and that's really good to see that they're getting that sport from home as well it's not just them sneaking out or you know leaving the family or anything like that they actually get that support and they're being role models now for their family as well sports becomes an essential part of their everyday life as a family too Of course, and that's something really to be proud of. Um, what do you hope will change um, for women in sports within the next five years? I think more women are getting more into sports. Um, and it's not just a gym. It, they're actually getting into team sports. They want to be part of something that is competitive. Um, they understand that if they want to make a change, they have to do it for themselves and not wait for national government bodies or stakeholders to, to do that for them. So we've seen a number, since MSA started, a number of organisations come about and starting things for themselves. So we've, we've seen a new badminton group start locally. We've seen um, netball groups start locally. We've seen people do the, um, you know, start to deliver Pilates classes and yoga classes. And that's really good. I hope MSA have inspired them to do that. And they've shown that, you know, Muslim women do want to engage in sports if the right environment is provided for. Um, and I think in the next five years, I hope the data that Sport England provide, they do a survey each year, um, every, every so often, sorry, um, that shows that South Asian women have the highest levels of inactivity rates. I hope that shifts into a positive way and, and shows that there's a decline in that in terms of more women from the South Asian background are doing sports. Um, and they, that they listen as well, that sports has to be taken to the community sometimes rather than just putting on the sport and expecting people to come to them. So the sports have to be adapted to meet the community needs as well. And um, why do you um, think it's important for women to understand that it is important for them to take part and play competitive sport? Um, I think for myself, the amount of skills that I've learned through sports, I mean, you, you, you fall down, you get back up, the competitiveness of it, the winning um, of it, the, the, the thrill that you get when you win or you score a goal is second to none. You also learn about leadership role, you learn about organisation um, skills, you learn about timekeeping skills, um, team working. All of these are transferable skills into employment. Um, so all of these skills are really, really important. But it's not just physical benefit, it's the mental health benefit as well. When you do exercise, when you have that sisterhood with, with other Muslim sisters doing the same thing, having the same goal, you, can, you, you feel part of something and that's really important. So our sports actually is becoming secondary to the sisterhood that we provide. So people come because they want to see their friend. They want to have a chat on the sidelines as well as doing the sports. They'll have a five minute break, catch up with everyone. And then they'll go out for coffee and have lunches. Um, you know, they've made new friendships that are lasting a lifetime now. Um, so it's more than just a sports club for MSA. It's become a holistic organization. Um, and, and people have made genuine friends through through MSA and that's really been good to see as well. Of course that's majorly important. Um, what advice would you give to women to encourage them to take part in sports today? I think um, we have to make time for ourselves. So as Muslim women we always put ourselves last on the list. Um, everyone else comes first whether it's our parents, whether it's our partners, whether it's our families and children we always come last on the list. It's really important that we take one or two hours a week to just concentrate on our own health and focus on our own selves as well. Um, and doing a sport is a good way of doing that. You also you get physically active, but you also have the mental health benefits as well. 
and you could try a variety of different sports. Um, you know, you might not like one sport, so that doesn't mean that all sports are not for you. Try a variety of different sports um, and you'll find the right one for you and then stick to it. So take a friend with you as well. Try it for a few weeks and you'll get the bug for it eventually. Um, and because a lot of our participants first were really nervous about coming to try one of our sessions. Um, but once they kept coming and um, you made friends as well, um, they really, you know, it's become part of their life now. So, uh, yeah, try lots of different sports be before you find the one that you really, really like. That's really great advice. And I know everyone will definitely appreciate it. I just want to say a huge thank you for being on our podcast today. It's definitely been informative. Thank you for inviting me. No worries. Thank you and have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye.